Hey guys, Joe here. Sorry if I'm coughing throughout this video. I'm still getting over my cold and I apologize. So if you start hearing a dying yak start coughing, that's me. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my stuff before, maybe consider checking out some of the other videos on the channel. There's over 700 of them, and I'm trying to get over 1,000 by the end of the year. And you will notice that my videos tend to be in the 15 to 30 minute range. I do that because I want to give you the most bang for your viewing buck. Let's talk about what we have in front of us. What we have in front of us, and I posted it in the community section here on the channel, is a Beretta Model 92S may look very familiar to many of you. However, this is not your uh, Lethal Weapon 92, nor is it something that most of you were born before this was manufactured. I'm going to go ahead and drop the mag. We're going to do a safety check, and yes, that is a heel release. And then we will pull the slide back, lock it open, and show you through this wonderful open ejection port that there is nothing in this firearm. So let's go ahead and drop it. What I have in my lovely mitts is a late 1970s, very early 1980s Beretta Model 92S from Italy. These were imported for a while. As you can see there on the slide, it's got the import mark. This was a firearm that was carried mostly by Italian law enforcement officers as well as military personnel. And there are substantial differences between later models and even earlier models, and we'll talk about a few of them as we go over it. First thing I will say is that this is on loan from my friend's store, Liberty Arms. Look it up. We're in Harrisonburg, Virginia. If I link to it in the video, it gets demonetized, and then I won't even be able to uh, get my message out to you guys. This appears to be in a very original condition. However, I can tell for a fact the barrel has been changed. We will get to that eventually. But let's take a look around what happens to a pistol that is literally 32 to 33 years old. And as you can see, unless you go ahead and refinish the firearm, you do wind up getting a little bit of wear on it and, you know, some, some scratches and things like that because this firearm was carried by a authoritative personnel type person, I hope. Hopefully it wasn't just, you know, Tony, whatever his name, Iozo, over there in Italy. I love you, Italy. Also, it looks like it was owned by the same person for a very long time. Now, I can't say for certain whether it was the person that it was issued to or if it was another buyer after this pistol was retired, but things like this side panel has a lot more scratching and they're deeper than this side panel, and the wear mark on here makes me wonder how they were actually holding it because I'm thinking they probably had a ring or something that they were wearing on their hand that was causing this because the only other way to do that would be if you're a lefty. Now I shoot left-handed but it's not my primary hand. It's not my typical hand for shooting but it could have been an officer or a military personnel's left-handed firearm and if that was the case the ring here could be a good example of why that is taken off and this could be scratched from in and out of the holster on that side. If you have one of these and you're a lefty, please put it down in the comment if your wear is consistent with that. Going around it, it looks very much like the Beretta we all know, with a couple of differences. Obviously the biggest one being the fact that this one has a, well it's not a heel release, but a bottom release. And in fact, these magazines if you look at new manufacturer Beretta 92 FS mags and even PT 92 Taurus mags, many of the companies that produce magazines still include this cutout. And if you've ever wondered why your mag had cutouts up here for your traditional button release, as well as cutouts at the bottom, it's to ensure backwards compatibility with firearms. Now this appears to be an original mag, has the original stamping on it, uh, caliber, nine para made in Italy. So that's what it should say and that's what it does. It only came with one being a military surplus pistol you don't always guarantee you're gonna get multiple mags. The slide condition, the printing is very nice. The sights are pretty honestly mediocre. It's a rear U or rear crescent and front post. However, either through wear or somebody knocked it down to get it to shoot flat. Not sure, but that uh, that front post is damn near non-existent on this thing. I can still acquire a picture, but it's more difficult on a black background. If I was over here, for example, trying to acquire that picture, I would get frustrated 
pretty damn quickly. Needs another dot of something on there to help locate it. And it's pinned in or welded in so you can't just, you know, change it. On the outside, you will notice one major difference is the fact that this only has a safety slash decocker on the one side. That was something that was done specifically on the S model. So it still functions like a normal decocker on a Beretta. It doesn't go back up on its own, but it's only one-sided. Otherwise, the controls are the same. You have your slide lock, slide release, and your takedown. Berettas are notorious for their easy takedown, which we will demonstrate in a minute, but we are still talking about it. A couple of things you're going to notice is, number one, the serial number has no stampings. Normally, Berettas have a date stamp afterwards, so you can identify the year based on that, as well as a couple other spots on the gun. This gun does not have any of those because this is an ex-military firearm. It was not required to have those stamps on it that a civilian version would. Using the serial number, the lack of stamping, the single-sided safety decocker, and the bottom mag release allows me to identify this with very good and very high probability that this was manufactured sometime between 1978 and 1982. So it's a five-year gun. It's very old. Like I said, it, it's <laughs> you're talking about a gun that's in the 30s, almost 40-year-old range. Now, all the Beretta 92 series are double-action, single-action. What that means is you can pull the trigger to set the hammer from a rest Basically, if you drop the gun, it shouldn't set it off in this condition. But you can do that. You can go to half cock, which makes your pull a little bit easier. Or you can pull the hammer back and start in single action mode. I'm going to use the box here as a demonstration. Look how short that is in single action. Now watch what happens when you have a double action reset. It's reset way back there because it has to come farther in on the slide to grab the hammer. And then your pull is a straight pull. There is no wall. You just keep pulling until it fires. However, if you are running a magazine through it and it resets the gun so that the hammer is cocked, your reset is extremely short. Watch this. Right there. Look at that. You can barely see any air through there. And then the next shot is super super crisp. Now it does have a decocker system on it so you can put a magazine in, rack the slide in order to get a bullet in the chamber and then you can just decock the pistol. That way your first shot will be double action. It's a little over a five inch barrel. Sticks out just a touch there. I think it's listed as a 5.25 inch barrel. I like that design. It looks cool. It takes its open top design from guns like the Walther P1 or P38 as it was more uh, commonly known and you can see a video on one up on this channel where I almost broke my finger because of the safety. Really good time. And it uses a different locking system obviously since it doesn't have lugs up here than a 1911. Let's go ahead and pop the top off and in order to do that we will drop the magazine some people say that's a slower way of doing it. I don't believe so. In fact, I think it's actually a very easy thing to do because you can just do that and strip the mag at the same time. Yeah, it's not as easy as just hitting the thumb release there, but it's not nearly as bad as people think it is. Maybe if the mag sticks, but then you're still down here, so you can just strip it out. But magazine out safety check it since I've been putting a magazine in it over and over and it is clear. All you have to do to take apart a Beretta 92 series pistol and that does include things like the 40 Smith & Wesson which was the 98. All you got to do is grab the gun, push this button, knock that down, and pull. Arguably one of the easiest disassemblies in the gun world. There are very few guns that I can think of that even come close to that simplistic way of taking it down. I have a fly on my light. I had a fly on my light. Inside the slide, it's very basic. You just have a recoil spring and a guide rod. It is not captive, so be careful. It's not as apt to go flying because it's not under the same amount of pressure as a 1911, but I would still make sure to put a finger over the end of it. So that brings us to the barrel, and with it in its locked position, it's not coming out of the barrel. 
That's because it uses a dropping block recoil system. When the gun is fired, the slide moves back. This pin interacts with that face inside the gun, which then drops the block and allows the slide to come back while the barrel stays where it is. So when the gun is in battery, this is an approximation of its location. It might be a little bit further back, but I'm doing this by hand. But this is part of the rail system and when the gun is first fired, it's up here to prevent the slide from coming back. As it comes back, it interacts and pushes the pin in, which drops the block, completing the slide, um, I guess, the, the path for the slide to take, while locking the barrel in position. So now the slide will continue moving backwards while the barrel is fixed. And when it comes back, it's going to drag the barrel back forward, which lifts the block back up. So every time it fires, it does that. One thing you'll notice is that the barrel doesn't tilt while it's doing that. That leads to a very flat shooting pistol. And a very accurate pistol, which is why it was a very popular pistol. The gun itself was available in different materials throughout its lifetime, this being an original 92S. It's a steel frame. In the 80s they did aluminum frames and then as it moves on they started doing like plastic covered metal or aluminum and other combinations of alloys. But as you can see inside this one, because it's all steel, it's held up remarkably well. Again, I can't tell if it's been refinished. I'm not that skilled, but it does look like it's in very good shape. The rails are not deformed or damaged at all. And the internals back here, the extractor looks good. Ejector. Yes, the ejector. Sorry, I always call that the extractor, but that's the ejector. Looks like it's in good shape as well as all the components. Let's take a look at the barrel so I can show you why I believe this is a rebarreled gun. Number one, right here on the slide, has a serial number. That serial number does not match the gun. Pistols in Europe and outside of the United States are required to have a serial number stamped on the frame, the barrel, and the slide. This one does not have a slide mounted serial number, which I thought was a little bit odd, but being that it's a surplus gun, I think that's why it gets away with it. Additionally, this barrel does have a proof mark on this side, which shows that it is not an original barrel to this particular gun. It is stamped with the PB, so it is right for the region, meaning it wasn't rebarreled here, or if it was rebarreled, it was rebarreled using another 92S. And that is your field strip Beretta 92. Now, it's pretty much the same takedown for even the M9A1s, A2s, and A3s, so what you just saw me do here, you can easily duplicate and disassemble your firearm for cleaning. It's time to put it back together. To do that, it's really easy. You grab your barrel. Hi there, Mr. Barrel. Slide it into the slide. You do have to line up the drop block with the lines here. You can see the cutouts there, that's where it allows the slide to have the cam or the blocks go up inside of it. Next you're going to take your recoil spring, you put the non-guide rotted end in first, sorry, that's not good English. This takes a little bit of wiggling, sometimes I need to do it off camera, but that time it went fine. It needs to sit flat, a lot of people will get it up on the top edge here and then it won't seat correctly and it won't go back together. Take your pistol, line it back up with the rails. I'm doing this sideways off camera so you'll have to forgive me. Come back a little bit, flip your tab back up and you are back in action. Now when these were first imported into the country, they were only a couple of hundred bucks. Prices have changed since then. They have gotten a little bit more expensive. This one is a little bit over 400. Not a terrible price, especially considering the condition of it is actually really darn nice. So whoever gets it will get a pretty nice shooting piece. If you want something more collectible, you can always hold off and find something else, but you're gonna spend a little bit more money. Now for the money you're gonna spend on this, you could get a relatively new PT-92 which is very similar. However, the PT-92 has kind of aped the M9 lineup, so you get a few more more modern features like a rail and better grips and things like that. Or you could go with the Gerson from TSOS. It's actually called the Gerson Regard, but it's manufactured by TSOS in Turkey, which is less expensive than this 
in a brand new firearm. However, it is a alloy frame, so keep that in mind. One thing I don't want to do is inject my personal opinion here because I've never fired this gun. I've had a PT-92, which is very similar. It was an older one, so it was actually built on Beretta tooling, but I've never fired an actual Beretta. So what I want to do is hold off. If this one stays around long enough, maybe it would become part of the collection. Maybe if you guys want to subscribe, you'll help me grow the channel, and we can do that. And then we can take one of these out to the range. So that's about it. Sorry about my voice going really weird throughout this whole video. I'm trying so hard not to cough right now and it's killing me. It's actually frustrating me and giving me anxiety, but I want to put out these videos because I want to get content out for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. Let me know what your favorite firearm is. Maybe consider using my Amazon affiliate links down below. That would help the channel grow without you having to just throw me any kind of money through something like Patreon. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So as I said before I got deathly ill here, I want to do more videos and put out more content this year. I'm going to continue to do that as much as my breathing allows. I do apologize, but stay tuned and see what comes out next. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.